Good morning. In today's class, we'll be seeing an example for design of a single reinforced beam problem statement. Design a simply supported beam for the following data. Flare span 4.77 meters, wall thickness 230 mm, live load 10 kN per meter, concrete grade M30, steel grade FE415, nominal cover M30. Let's look into the design. The actual design steps involved geometry, load calculation and analysis, check for adequacy, calculation of area of steel, check for shear, check for deflection, and finally the drawing. So let's start the solution part. Step one geometry. In this step, we are going to find out the effective span, uh, effective cover, effective depth, overall depth, as well as the width of the beam. So now let's start. So the effective span uh, is the sum of clear span plus effective depth or the center to center of support, whichever is less. So this is taken from class 22.2a of the code. Effective span, uh, in this case, we don't have the effective depth. So we will start with center to center of the support. So the effective span is given as uh, the clear span plus of the support on either side. So effective span equal to 4.77 plus uh, 0.23 by 2 plus 0.23 upon 2, which is equal to 5 meters. Depth of the beam. Uh, so we are going to use the equation from class 23.2.1.A, uh, span by D ratio equal to 20. But since we need to achieve a section which is safe in uh, strength as well as deflection so we will take the span by d ratio as 13 uh, any value which is ranging between 12 to 15 so i'm just taking 13 in this case and let's check so whether the section is safe under deflection or not so assuming span by d as 13 the effective depth required is 384 above effective cover is the sum of nominal cover plus stirrup thickness plus main bar upon two so we are assuming 8 mm thick rod as stirrups and 20 mm bars as main bars as the initial assumption. So let us calculate the effective cover. So effective cover D dash is given as 13, which is the nominal cover plus 8 mm, which is the stirrup thickness and 20 mm is the main bar thickness or so 20 upon two. So which results in 48 mm. Overall depth is the sum of effective depth plus uh, effective cover so overall depth D, capital D is given as 384 plus 48 mm, which is 432 mm. So we are going to round up this number 432 to a higher uh, round of value, either divisible by 50 or 100. So in this case, we are taking the overall depth as 450 mm. So the overall depth, we are assuming it as 450 mm, and we are going to calculate the revised effective depth uh, from the effective cover and overall depth, which comes to 402 mm. And width of the beam, normally we take width of the beam as the thickness of the wall. So here in this case, we are just assuming slightly greater than that. So we are taking width of the beam as 250 mm. So this is the end of first step. So where we have calculated the effective length, which is five meters and Overall depth is 450 mm, effective depth is 402 mm, and uh, assumed width is 250 mm. Step two, load calculation and analysis. Uh, so in this case, what we are going to do is like, we are going to find out the weight of the beam. We have been given the load of on the beam. So sum them up, find out the moments and shear force. So self weight of the beam is calculated as cross-sectional area into unit weight of concrete. So 0.25 into 0.45 into 25, which comes to 2.813 kN per meter. Live load as given in the problem, we are taking it as 10 kN per meter. Total load on the beam is the sum of dead load and live load, which is 12.813 kN per meter. Now the problem has come down to a simple uh, analytical problem. A simply supported beam of span five meters 
uh, supporting a load of 12.813 kilometer per meter. So this problem can be analyzed with, with simple equations. So we know the maximum bending moment of a simply supported beam with the UDL is WL square upon eight and um, shear force for a simply supported beam with the UDL as WL by two. So we'll use those two equations to find out the maximum bending moment. So let's track. Maximum bending moment is given by WL square upon eight. So W we know 12.813 kilometer per meter and the effective span is five meters. So substituting them, we get the maximum moment as 40.05 kilonewton per meter, kilonewton meter. And now we are uh, using limit state method. So we'll be applying a partial load factor of 1.5 to convert the maximum moment into ultimate moment. So the ultimate moment is 1.5 times maximum moment, which is equal to 61 kilonewton meter. Calculation of maximum shear force. So shear force is given by WL upon two, so which comes out to 32.03 kilonewtons. And the ultimate shear force is again obtained by multiplying 1.5, which is the partial load factor to the maximum shear force obtained. So we get the ultimate shear force as 49 kilonewtons. So now we have got a moment, 61 kilonewton meter, for which we'll be designing the longitudinal reinforcement and it will be arranged at the bottom. And we have the shear force, so which uh, will help us in finding out the shear reinforcement. Step three, check for accuracy. Moment of resistance uh, is calculated from the equation given in class G 1.1 C, uh, which is uh, equal to 0.36 XU max upon D into one minus 0 0.42 into XU max upon D into B D square F C Q. So XU max upon D is a proportion based on the grade of steel, which has been given in class 38.1 notes. So XU max upon D is equal to 0.8 for uh, four and five grade steel. So let us substitute the values of XU max upon D, B, D and FCK um, to find out the moment of resistance. So substituting those values, we get a uh, moment of resistance, MU comma L as 167.216 kilonewton meter. So we have got the actual moment from analysis, which is 61 kilonewton meter. And we have got the moment of resistance, which is 167.216 kilonewton meter. So MU is less than MU comma L. So the section is re under reinforced. So we'll end up in a singly reinforced section. So for uh, the moment 61 kilonewton meter, we are going to find out the area of steel repaired and we will provide them at the bottom of the beam. So let's start with the calculation of area of steel. That is step four. So area of steel is calculated from the equation given in G 1.1 B, uh, MU equal to 0.87 FY AST into D into one minus AST FY upon FCK BD. So AST is the unknown. We will end up in a quadratic equation and uh, resolving it, we will get uh, two roots, the least, the least one will be the AST required. So substituting MU as 61 kilonewton meter and the FI is 415, D is 402 mm, FI is 415, B is 250 mm and the FCK is 30. So we get AST is 448 mm square. Now, once we have found out this AST, we have to find out AST minimum because the court tells that AST minimum um, should be governed if AST is less than AST minimum. So we are finding out AST minimum from class 26.5.1.1a, uh, which is given as AST minimum upon BD equal to 0.85 upon FY. So substituting the values of B, D, and the FY, we get AST minimum as 206 mm square. So AST is greater than the AST minimum. So AST will be used for arrangement of steel. So let's calculate the diameter of bar and number of bars required. So since we have assumed 20 mm bars to be used initially, so the number of bars is calculated from uh, by using area of steel calculated upon area of one bar. So number of 20 dia bars required is 448 upon 300 and 
which is equal to 1.4 so rounding up we get two numbers so we'll be providing two number of 20 mm as main bars throughout the bottom of the beam as main reinforcement now <coughs> we'll calculate the area of steel and percentage of steel which is needed for calculation of uh, shear strength so area of steel provided uh, is number of bars into area of uh, bar so which is equal to 2 into 314 which is 628 mm square percentage of steel provided is 100 as upon bd so substituting them back so we get pp as 0.625% now top bars since we have to provide the minimum two bars at the top so ast minimum will be provided at the top so we have calculated ast minimum which is 206 mm square so let us assuming let us take 16 mm bars to be used at the top so let us find out the number of 16 mm bars required so which is equal to 206 upon 201 which is 1.02 but since we have to provide minimum we will be having two number of bars at the top so provide 216 mm at top bars as top bars throughout the beam step 5 check for shear now in this one what we are going to do is like we are going to find out the actual shear stress then find out the design shear strength of the concrete okay so the actual shear stress tau v is given by total shear force the ultimate shear force upon uh, the cross sectional area so this shear stress can exceed uh, the design shear strength of concrete or it may not exceed okay so in case if it is exceeding then we are going to find out the balance force and arrange shear reinforcement for the Uh, balance shear force else we are going to arrange minimum shear reinforcement now the actual shear stress tau v is given by total uh, ultimate shear force upon cross sectional area which is 0.488 newton per mm square the shear strength the design shear strength of concrete tau c is obtained from table 19 Uh, depending upon the grade of concrete and the percentage of steel provided so since pt is 0.625 m m30 grade concrete so we obtain tau c as 0.545 newton per mm square now in this case tau v which is 0.488 newton per mm square is less than tau c so the actual shear stress is less than the design shear stress so uh, the minimum shear reinforcement has to be provided as per clause 26.5.1.6 so which is given as ast upon bst greater than or equal to 0.4 upon 0.875 fi asv represents the area of uh, steel in vertical that is the shear reinforcement into number of legs so two leg means two into cross section of each leg and b is the width of the beam s v is the spacing of the strip f is the grade of steel now assuming 8 mm bars two legged vertical strips are used okay so a s v is 2 into area of 8 mm bar so 2 into 50 so substituting back uh, a s v as 2 into 50 and b is 250 and f y as 4 on 5 we get s v that is facing of students so which ends up in 361 mm now once we have found out this sv which is exceeding 3 mm we need to find out the maximum spacing of students which is given in class 26.5.1.5 so which states that maximum spacing of students is equal to 0.75 times the effective depth or 300 mm whichever is less so 0.75 times the effective depth is uh, equal to 0.75 into 402 which is 301.5 mm so the least is 300 mm so we get the maximum spacing of stirrups is 300 mm so we are going to adopt the least so we have 361 we have 301.5 and 300 mm so we'll be providing stirrups at a spacing of 300 mm so provide 8 mm two legged vertical stirrups at 300 mm center to center step 6 check for deflection here we are going to find out the actual span by d ratio and we are going to find out the allowable span by d ratio 
if the allowable span by d ratio is greater than actual span by d ratio we are safe else we have to revise the section so either increase the depth or increase depth as well as width so let's check actual span by d ratio is uh, 5000 upon 402 which is 12.43 allowable span by d ratio which is uh, given in class 23.2.1 Uh, so allowable span by d ratio equal to 20 into modification factor 20 is the number uh, which is given for simply supported beam okay so modification factor is obtained from figure of figure 4 of is 456 so for finding out uh, modification factor we are in need of actual stress in steel so fs which is given us 0.58 fy into area of steel repaired upon area of steel provided so area of steel repaired is 448 and we have provided steel is 628 so substituting those values we get fs as 171.7 newton per mm square so with the help of uh, percentage of steel which is 0.625 and fs 171.7 newton per mm square from figure 4 we get modification factor as 1.45 so substituting it back into the allowable span by d equation so we get the allowable span by d equal to 20 into 1.45 which is 29 so the actual span by d ratio is 12.43 and allowable is 29 so we are safe so the section is safe under deflection step 7 drawings so we'll be drawing the longitudinal section and the cross section for our understanding so the first one is the longitudinal section the top one so we have a clear span of 4770 mm and wall thickness 230 mm on either side and overall depth of the beam is 450 mm so at the bottom we are providing two 20 dia bars throughout so there's no curtailment since only two bars are being used and same thing at the top we are providing two 16 mm bars throughout and there's no curtailment and stirrups uh, we are using two leg 8 mm at 300 mm center to center from the face of the support to the other face of the support so that has been shown here now taking a cut section ya ya so let us see how it looks like so the width of the beam is 250 mm and the overall depth is 450 mm so at the bottom we have two number of 20 dia bars at the top we have two numbers of 16 mm bars on the stirrup which has been represented here as a loop so it is two legged so we have two vertical legs two legged 8 mm at 300 mm center to center so with this the design of a singular reinforced section comes to an end thank you